Hi there and welcome to the eighth row in the Get Fit by Rowing series. Now after a couple of nice warm days, the temperature has plummeted, hence the hoodie for the warm up, which we're about to get into. However, I need to describe what today's session is first. Now it's gonna be a 30 minute row, but we're gonna break it down into chunks, into three minute, two minute, one minute chunks. You're gonna do them and then you're gonna repeat it five times, that takes care of your 30 minutes. But today's session is programmed as being one in the kind of the tough, the harder ones. It's not low intensity, it's not max, it's in between. And how we're gonna do this is we're gonna do the first three minutes at your low intensity. So that pace that you've been rowing at for your zone two, okay, 20 strokes a minute, run about that pace. But then we're gonna spend two minutes where we increase our stroke rate to 24 strokes a minute. And naturally that should really help you go run about five or six seconds faster. And then after those two minutes, we're gonna increase pace again to 28 strokes a minute and whatever that natural increase is is probably going to be about six or seven seconds faster again okay now i'll talk 2k pace guys and whatever when we get into the main row and all that kind of stuff but i want to get into the warm-up first hopefully it's clear enough what today's session is if it's not then have a quick kind of pause and read the description it's all in there for you okay but like i said yesterday why not watch the intro and all this stuff first read the description and then you can get into the main row when you sit down in the gym instead of having to listen to me ah, what but you have to listen to me anyway Anyway, so anyway, warm up. <laughs> Let's get our machine set up first. Now I'm back on the Concept 2 today, which means I have to check my drag factor and make sure that's where I want it to be, which I've already done. If you don't know about drag factor, then please just set your lever between four and five and then watch the video I have on this channel where I talk about drag factor, what it is, why you want to set it somewhere and stuff. <gasps> ah, big breath. Right, next up, go to your monitor and set it to eye height so you don't have to look up or you don't have to look down. And finally, set your foot stretcher height so you can come into the front of the machine with your shins in a vertical position comfortably. Now for me, because I'm in socks, today that means that I've got two holes showing okay I've got size 10 feet um, and I'm in socks so two holes showing if I'm wearing shoes I only have one hole showing okay hopefully that makes sense now we're going to do what we've been doing all the time so far in this warm-up we're going to start off at a nice gentle pace for the first minute increase it then do some drills if you want and then we'll get into our main session it's quite a long intro today sorry so let's get going in three two one and we're off there we go so a nice gentle pace, let your body open up. And maybe you had a rest day yesterday or something and so you're like, oh, I've got to get used to rowing again. So use this first minute to just acclimatize yourself. And actually for me, having I've spent the past three or four sessions just on the water rower. So this is my first row on the Concept 2 for about a week I think and so it's just taking me a second to get used to the feel of it because as similar as an intensity point of view as the concept two and water rower may be there is a difference in feel for sure especially as being my feet are slightly wider apart on the concept two versus my water rower okay so for the next minute you can push a little harder with the legs. Not so hard, not too hard. Remember, this is meant to be a warm up, but you can think about the connection timing between pushing with your feet and your hands connecting the handle to whatever makes your machine go. In my case, that's the flywheel. You want that forwards tilt arm straight then hold that tilt and straight arms as you push your feet into the machine and hang off the handle as you do so getting the power in there okay let's take two more strokes and then i'm going to take one foot out put it on the ground and continue rowing now because I'm in socks today it's a lot easier to get my feet in and out of the foot stretchers for this drill section but don't worry if it takes you five seconds or so to transition your feet in and out two more here one more because yeah slip slip and I've lost no time. So that's quite handy, but it's not the only reason I have rowing socks. I do feel 
I get a better connection sensation when I'm in socks and the reason I've gone back to rowing in shoes quite a lot is because of this high rocks thing where because I have to do the running part of high rocks I need shoes so it made sense to roll with them on again okay both feet back in legs straight then roll with your back and arms so pick up the weight of the flywheel by swinging your back from that forwards to backwards lean and then once you've connected here and you feel that weight that's when you pull the handle okay so your back takes up the initial strain and then you add in arms and let's roll to the front with straight arms and that forward tilt and just push out with your legs don't worry about power here this is about developing the timing of your feet and hands but also getting you used to holding that forwards tilt and straight arms as you start the drive this should get you out of the habit of pulling too early or swinging your back too early or at least if you do that drill more often 30 seconds probably isn't enough to really change a habit but that's the drill you use to help you if you pull too early or if you swing too early okay so continue moving up and down the rail have a quick drink and i'll describe one more time what it is we're doing today okay then as a reminder what we're doing today is a 30 minute row but it's going to be broken down into three minute two minute and one minute chunks five times now as such i have programmed 30 minutes into my monitor i have not set this as a three minute two minute one minute interval five times because for the concept two in the pm5 it introduces a little bit of a pause in between all of those intervals and it means that we could all be completely out of sync by the end so i recommend doing it the same way as me but if you want to program your monitor into three two one five times by all means do okay nobody's gonna uh nobody's gonna shout at you who's there to shout at you so we're gonna start off at that low intensity 20 strokes a minute uh zone two ish heart rate that we've been rowing at uh, up until this point so don't worry if your heart rate doesn't quite drift up there over the course of three minutes it, unlikely that it will um, but what's going to happen is that the two minutes and one minute the increase that follow is going to get your heart rate up and then you use the three minutes to then recover for the next session then you go two one and then you recover then you go two one and it all makes sense okay so less talk and more rowing <laughs> i just wanted to say that at the beginning um and i'll give you a little bit more info as we start and yeah so got half an hour together and we'll talk about lots of stuff or at least i'll talk to you about lots of stuff let's be fair so are you ready for this you've had a drink if i'm gonna have one last drink i'd recommend you the same hopefully you didn't have to listen to me swallow there are you ready then let's go in three two one go so a nice gentle start and like i say from now on when we come back round to these three minute 20 strokes a minute sections it's going to be about recovery about just settling down a little bit after the faster sections so from a heart rate guide today's session doesn't really have one i mean what it will mean is that you're going to be spending most time in zone three and four. So you're going to have that kind of performance intensity side of things. But we're not really chasing a heart rate. We're just rowing at whatever naturally feels right. So what will happen is as we increase to 24 strokes a minute you'll do that by pushing a little harder with your legs in order to have a bit more speed on the drive phase of your stroke okay so 24 you push a little bit harder as such you're then putting more power into the machine but you're also going to be doing four strokes a minute more than you're currently rowing at right now so more strokes more power means you should be going faster and like i said 
it'll probably be around five or six seconds. So if you are using a 2K training pace, then this section of the row will be around about 2K plus 18 pace. And then you'll go to 2K plus 12 for the 24s and 2K plus five for the 28s. But for those who are more heart rate focused, I just want you to use a natural increase. So get your stroke rate up to 24 and think about five or six seconds faster. So don't go too fast. But make sure to increase the power a little bit. And we're about to get there in three strokes time, okay? So two after this one. Here we go. So push a little bit harder. And that will give a slightly faster dry phase. And therefore you complement that faster dry phase with a slightly faster return. So remember, 24 strokes a minute is one stroke every two and a half seconds, as opposed to 20 strokes a minute, which is one stroke every three seconds. So you need to take half a second off. And you do that with a slightly faster drive and a slightly faster recovery. So a minute done here. Your heart rate should be increasing by now. Possibly at 70% max already. So you're leaving zone two on your way to zone three. And that's what we want for this session today. Is that the 24 and 28 strokes a minute sections, you're working progressively harder and in the 20s a little bit easier. Okay. So four strokes time, and we'll go up to 28. You ready after this one? So push harder, faster stroke rate, and hopefully you've seen a pace increase of five or six seconds on the monitor. Just find your rhythm here. You want to make sure you have a good flowing drive and recovery. We're almost done on this one, 15 seconds to go. Okay, how many? Three more? Two more? I say two more. One more. And we're back to 20s. How did my heart rate? So 166, I finished that. Which I think is 72% of my max. Now I want you to still continue rowing at round about the same pace you started at today. I don't want you to stop or back right off. So if you started today's row at 207 pace 
I want you to be back at two or seven pace. Remember, today is meant to be about working you a little bit harder, but not max. So these three minutes give you a chance to settle down, but it's not about stopping, okay? Or your heart rate recovering back to zone two. It may be that you don't see zone two again for the rest of this workout. And that's what you want. Like I say, these hard tempo-ish rows are meant to be hard tempo-ish. <laughs> Not meant to be easy. But doing it this way means it also stops these rows dipping into or dipping up into zone five. So we don't want to go there either. And just remember, if you're doing the 2K training pace, you'll have completely left heart rate training zones by now. Just concentrate on your pace. The two don't correlate anymore on a roll like this. So three, two, one. Come back up to 24. Push a little harder with your legs. Again, you're not overpowering the machine. You're just putting in a natural increase of a push to get rate and pace up from an intensity point of view this should feel about 7 out of 10 and then the 28s will feel closer to 9 out of 10 but that's okay because you're only doing one minute's worth another minute to go at 24 and this row has a lot of benefits control over your own pace being a huge one being able to rise from 20 to 24 to 28 in a controlled manner both with your stroke rate and your pace right you ready on four three two one let's go to 28 so push harder for a faster drive and then make sure to get the handle away smoothly but quickly you're not throwing it away so you still want rhythm but that handle away really is important for a higher stroke rate okay 10 seconds 4 3 2 1 
Back to 20s. Slow it down. So again, if you were 207 pace, I want you back there. Heart rate training isn't what we're doing really. You should find in post analysis that your heart rate would have possibly recovered. To the top end of zone two after these three minutes and then the oh, one minute at 28 you'll probably be nudging zone five but you won't be spending too much time there but hopefully now that we're on the third one of these you'll understand what I meant about using these three minutes to just just calm yourself down it's not about stopping it's about calming down And it also just gives you a chance to reset your stroke technique too. Because maybe things are going a bit loose in order to get up to 28 strokes a minute. Maybe you haven't quite got the rhythm right for higher rate stuff and you're a little bit is it janky? is that the word? so let these 20s and possibly the 24s just reset your technique a little bit Whew. so where are we? Three strokes to go. Now we'll go back up to 24. One more. Ah, you ready? Here we go. Now I know this is another one where I'm talking more about the process of today's workout rather than some entertaining tales of me off the machine but it's important you stick to the intensities and stroke rates in this workout because otherwise you'll be lost in no man's land where you're not particularly training any part of your system when it comes to fitness because when you think about it this row in itself covers the entire range of this series low intensity 20s high intensity at 28 and then tempo intensity for these 24s so it's really the best of all worlds in one workout okay so four strokes to go two more one more 
Back to 28s. Push harder. And as well as the arms, these higher rate rates really reveal the importance of posture and your forwards tilt over your hips into the front and then holding it as you drive and swinging from that one o'clock to eleven o'clock rhythmically okay three two one back to twenties oh, and you're starting pace so 170 BPM heart which was 88 percent of max and then I wanted to just ease off through these two minutes or three minutes sorry and including this one we've only got two more sets to go which brings up the other added value of programming a workout like this once in a while it's not just about variation it's also uh, about time flying by because you're only ever looking at three minutes ahead in 2-1 which goes really quick absolutely fly through a half hour row and if you're used to doing just low rate 20s then even if right now you're rowing a couple of seconds slower than you might normally do the injection of the 24s and 28s will likely mean you'll still finish faster overall and row further than your typical steady zone 2 20s right so five more strokes and try and get back to the pace you've been doing these 24s at one more you ready here we go then push a little harder you should feel that as you push that sensation of hanging off the handle bracing against it as you push with the legs holding straight arms and a forward tilt that feeling should be a little bit more powerful than at the 20s but remember you're not thinking about pulling any harder with your arms 
you're just bracing, hanging off the handle with more power. Oh, where are we? Okay, 40 to go on this one. I'm definitely feeling this is in the right hard category. This is not max, but this is certainly not easy. I'm having to really concentrate on keeping the power in. One more here, and up to 28. So push and think about releasing the handle after your finish at the back. Let that be what triggers your recovery. Arm straight, create the forwards tilt, and then as the handle passes your knees, that's when you bend them. Okay, five, four, three, two, one, and back to 20s. Whew. This is the danger one where you may start to slow. Uh, on these 20s by too much. 89, heart rate. So, or percent of max, I mean. So properly knocking on the door of zone five. But like I say, that's okay, because I was only peering in through that door of zone five. And then this three minutes gives me a chance to settle a bit, but I would not use the word recover to describe this three minutes at this stage. Settling down a bit is about as far as I'd say. And my phone's about to fall off. Whew. Make sure to breathe. <laughs> I tend to forget the breath part when I'm making these videos because, well, I'm talking to you, my breathing pattern isn't great. I mean, I end up finding a pattern, but where usually I'd have a very strong two breath rhythm at this pace because I'm talking to you I'm kind of grabbing for breath in between phrases <laughs> but hopefully your breath is in a nice rhythmic pattern to complement your stroke Whew. Okay, two more. One more. And it's our final 
24s, come on. Push a little bit harder. I think I'm a second out here. I think I was going too, too high a stroke rate to start there, sorry. Bit over eager. I said, was it yesterday? But the handle, the handle height that you want it on a nice, smooth, plain, nice, neutral height from start to finish. You can see on my Concept 2 the screw at the top of the chain return and that when I look down at the catch is round about the height I want the chain at it will naturally dip through the course of the stroke but as I come forwards I want to imagine my handle enters a bubble at the back of the stroke and then as the handle passes my knees it rises up ok one more here last 28 ah, come on less than 20 well, that's what 25 strokes now we're almost done don't worry if this last interval feels 10 out of 10 or if your heart rate enters zone 5 it's just one minute at the end so it's important to keep pace up 5 4 3 2 1 oh yeah so I finished 173 beats per minute which is 98% of max so firmly in zone 5 but because it was such a short well I whistled a short period that's okay what we didn't want was for the workout today to all be at that intensity all right have a quick drink and then let's quickly get into a cool down oh, start this at the low intensity pace you've just been rowing at and then gradually slow down okay in three two one go so my heart rate recovered to 145 by the start of this cool down and although it might hover still around that as I go through this cool down that's okay although I'm down to 132 already so it just shows that an active recovery is just as effective as just stopping and it's better for you because this way my heart rate is gradually slowing down instead of plummeting from 173 to my resting heart rate 
of 40. <laughs> Although I doubt my heart rate will get back to 40 for at least another hour. And that's the thing about anything that involves high intensity is there's a real thermogenic kind of afterburn that you get from working hard especially for the max intensity like the Tabata workout in session two this week it may only have been 12 minutes worth of rowing but the after effects go on and on and on throughout the day as long as you put in enough effort that is hopefully you've reduced your effort through the course of this cool down I've only got three strokes to go you don't of course have to stop just because I'm stopping but I am going to get into stretching session next if you care to join me if you don't have time to stretch that's fine but please stretch your quads your hamstrings and your glutes if you get a chance but don't do it in the shower so don't want you to slip and fall over I told you I say the same thing all the time or if you have space find yourself a mat and rather than a mat that's John <laughs> grumpy John he'll take you through he's not grumpy just that's my resting face and he'll take you through some stretches if you have access to a mat or I will take you through stretches if you have to sit on the machine still so put your feet back in the straps have them a little bit loose so you can brace your feet against them have a good posture put your hands in the air and then fold forwards keep those legs nice and straight but don't lock your knees down you don't want to have like an under underside bow to them as you're doing this you want them nice and straight and that fold forwards and you can hold your ankles if you wish or hold your toes if you wish but what I don't want you to do is like really lunge for them or worse pull on them okay if you pull yourself and force yourself down you can kind of injure yourself so let your especially on the concept too because there's a slight like a downward lean here it helps there's like you get a little bit more gravity doing this so you should get a nice stretch from your hamstrings doing it that way of course any of these stretches that I do you can stretch your own way so you do glutes next so I've got one leg up on the rail this foot comes over so my heel is in the crook of my knee it is a crook or the divot whatever you want to call it um, pull that knee across my body so I have a straight line between my face my knee and my foot hold it in place with one arm and then I rotate round and I hold on to the back of the machine for a little bit of stability but also it just gives me a way to kind of think about that rotation round it means that I'm getting far enough around. so I just kind of lackluster and I'm not round I don't get enough of a stretch but the moment I actually add in that little turn just here that's when I can feel that stretch radiating up through my glutes uh, and weirdly after yesterday's row I've got quite a lot of tenderness and I don't know whether it's just that I did that full 33 minutes or 35 minutes to include the rest time on the water rower on the concept two seat pad with that divot in the middle of it whether that's kind of because I was complaining not complaining I don't think I to complain change legs I did mention there we go that's a better word that as much as it was a solution having the concept two seat pad uh, on top of a couple of wristbands on top of the water rower seat which has already been turned around the other way around in order to offset the weird divot that they've got on it which actually when I look at it because it's on the wall over there look at it from this angle the seat's ridiculous I mean you do wonder who I mean not to not to slag off water rower because it's a great thing but you do wonder who designed that seat when you look at it because I don't think that was a rower I don't think any rower would design something that sloped up at the front the seat uh, right uh, we're going to do quads next you can rest one hand on the monitor and then flick your foot up your opposite foot up and hold it against put a uh, up against your backside now the concept two does have looking at it from here there is like a notch at the front of it but where your hamstrings and kind of yeah where the top of your hamstrings and glutes go it's got room for it the little notches in the middle almost to kind of support your um okay where would that be there really it's not gonna support your perineum or anything it's gonna slide top stop you from sliding off the front of it i guess um but it doesn't have the huge big rise that the water rural one does now, uh, it's been pointed out swap legs that the oh, single rail water rower oh, is, <laughs> the single rail water rower um, has a much better design of seat 
um, the, it's the, it seems to be the dual rail one that has this has the weirdness of that kind of rise at the front. So if you're looking at water rowers and you get a chance to look at both, then do. I'm still trying to find the monorail one so I can try it for myself. Because basically, I think similar to the, let's get down to hip flexors and do them and then I'll carry on my, my wee story. Move my water bottle out of the way. So I'm going to continue Alan from Par Physio's stretch for this. So uh, you've got your one foot in front of you on the floor, your knees directly above your ankle, so it's a nice 90 degree angle, 90 degree angle in the back leg as well. Have a good posture, squeeze your glute as intense it, and then have a slight lean backwards. And that should then get you a really nice stretch into the hip flexor that has the knee on the ground. Okay, so remember don't tense. If you kind of tense and fight the stretch, you can lose it. So try and be, try and relax if you can. Squeeze that glute. Slightly lean back, and then you'll feel that kind of burn of the stretch. Burn's the wrong word, but you know what I mean. You'll feel that stretch kind of suddenly coming down when you get it right. You'll go, oh, that's what it's meant to be. Ah, right, swapping legs. What was I talking about? Oh, yeah, yeah. Swapping legs, it's exactly the same thing. Uh, yeah, but I'm past the point of... I mean, I know I'd looked at the... I made a video about the Peloton rower, okay? Looking at people using it and like looking at the design of it and basically slated it and said, Peloton, we got it completely wrong. This is going to be awkward to use. You're going to end up punching the handle through the monitor. But that was only... That was done purely by looking at it, okay? It wasn't done by using it. And so I've made a promise to myself from now on that I will only judge something if I've used it, okay? I remember a film critic, uh, Mark Kermode, saying that he would never review a film without seeing it, which sounds pretty obvious, doesn't it? But uh, there will be, basically what he said is that there are reviewers out there that will just jump on what other people have said and therefore just kind of go, well, they don't like it, so therefore I'm not going to like it, even though I haven't seen it. And so, although it's not quite the same thing with rowing machines, oh, um, I don't want to be... Like the Peloton, I'd love to use and actually give a proper honest review of it. Or uh, the, the Aviron, uh, Aviron, is that how you pronounce it? Their rower, I want to use that so I can say whether it's any good or not. Because it looks great, right? Uh, hands straight out in front of you. We're going to do shoulders first, then forearms, because I've started this way. <laughs> and bring it across your body. Use your other arm to hold it across, uh, against your body, across your body. Just a little bit of tension there to get a stretch into your shoulder. But yeah, so the Aviron rower, because of its connected side of things, um, that it has gamification and it has all that kind of stuff. I really want to try and give it a go um, and have an honest review of it. Because again, you're looking at it, I'm like, mm, that monitor looks as though it's going to be quite uncomfortable. But I'm not going to assume. Because you know what they say about assuming? If you don't, look up. Because I'm not going to swear. I don't want to have an explicit <laughs> E on this. Although I do think sometimes, let's swap arms, that my Scottish language gets me into trouble. Um, just the way I say for. Because sometimes it comes out fa. And if I then follow that with a letter that begins with C. It can be a little bit... So, so, so don't, what I'm saying is don't look at the YouTube auto transcripts because sometimes they can be wildly rude. <laughs> uh, yeah, so anyway, so that's most of my thing. So the, the, mo yeah, the monorail version of the water rower, I want to try and get hold of one so I can, so I can compare it. Because my microphone disappeared in my t-shirt. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I can compare it properly. Because after all, if I let's do, oh, I haven't done forearms. Oh, I knew that'd happen. So put your hands in front of your face. We'll do it sideways. It'll be a good angle for you. Sideways in front of your face, push them together, and then bring your hands down in front of your chest. You should then have a 90 degree, 90 degree angle between your fingers, like your hands and your wrist. And that should give you a nice wee stretch into your wrists and forearms. Um, but yeah, I mean, if I think, I'd only ever used one water roar before, and I didn't like it. Uh, I felt it was a really weak feeling stroke. Um, I felt that it was promoting slumping into the front of the machine, all this kind of stuff that I didn't like. And, so, and that was years ago. That must have been, I'm going to say 2016, 17 maybe. And I hadn't used one since. And then when I got the option to get my own water rower, I thought, you know what, it's about time I kind of revisited it and then used that one. And suddenly I'm like, oh, it must just have been the one I was using before. And I've been making all these poor, <laughs> poor review choices about the water roar based on one that was quite clearly either built wrong, broken, or a nasty knockoff that was, uh, for whatever reason, gave me a bad stroke. Uh, right, not bad stroke as in, oh, that sounds awful. <laughs> a bad rowing stroke. Let's do biceps next, the hands behind you. So you're a ski jumper, rotate those thumbs outwards. Um, 
So, I mean, ideally, if I had uh, all the money in the world, or if I had, I mean, who knows, like, if you look, I'm gonna, I, I quite like Austin from Training Tall. I find him like a little fun puppy, so um, I'm gonna, I'll, I quite like talking about him. Um, but he often reviews all the, like, myriad row machines he's reviewed and talked about. Who knows how, where he gets them from? Whether he gets, whether they just kind of deliver him one to review and they take it away, or whether he's, he makes oodles and oodles. Maybe this is why you should charge for rowing plans, John. <laughs> but maybe he makes enough money that he can buy them and then sell them on, who knows? But I don't really have that capacity to be able to do it, to get all these machines in and test them out and then... Because the fact, the truth is, I want to do most of my rowing in the concept too. I love using the water rower as well, and so between the two of them, there's no more room for me to have a proper rowing machine that I'd spend any time on. Uh, triceps, hands up in the air, round down your back, touching your spine, help that elbow up in the air, should give you a nice little stretch your tricep. So I have my water rower and my, my concept two um, for a little bit of change between the two, and there's no way I'd get uh, another one as on a permanent fixture. But I'd quite happily get some to review. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Tech person. You never know though, maybe it would be quite good to get a, a different rowing machine. I mean, what I don't have is a proper connected one, so maybe something like the Peloton or the Aviron would be a good thing. Because um, I mean, you've got the concept too that you can uh, swap arms, you can connect to uh, different apps, which kind of is connected with the smart row feature on the water rower. That way I can connect to XR and I think, can I hook you away into Zwift? I'm not too sure. But the water rower certainly connects as well, but neither of them are actually like standalone units, like an actual built-in one with a built-in monitor and whatever. So maybe if I was to get another rowing machine, that's what I'd get. Or maybe I'd go completely the other way and get like a <laughs> one of those old, you know, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll quickly, right, bear with me. I'll try and make this wee story as quick as I can. Um, there you go, done. So when I was about 14 and I wanted to get into fitness, uh, my mum said that she's, she's like, right, uh, what do you want? Do you want a bike? Do you want whatever? And actually, I mean, this has only just dawned on me. I only really only just clicked on me. I got a rowing machine, but it was one of those um, hydraulic piston ones. You know, the ones that's like the two handles and they've got like a little, it's like a V shape with a piston that comes forwards. And like, all it does is really tell you count and whatever. Oof. And it was perfectly, it was even advertised uh, as uh, fits underneath your bed. And it did, and it never came out again. I think I used, I think I had it for like a year, used it about six times. Um, but yeah, so that's actually when I was like 14, I'd first started. So maybe I should get one of them, get one of them, do a 2K on one of them, see how fast I can do a 2K. Anyway, there we go, I told you I'd try and be quick. So that is the end of uh, session eight, which if you're doing these four sessions a week means it's the, the end of week two. Um, now, uh, for those people that are doing it in real time with me, then you'll have noticed that uh, session two of this week has had to be a temporary one because of my microphone issues, but I'm gonna re-record that or re-record it tomorrow to then replace it, okay? If you're doing this in like 2025, you're like, what's he on about? So yeah, something happened to my microphone. It's making a lot of noise. I had to skip a session, but pfft. Um, yeah. So there we go. That's us. We're done for week two, or if it's session eight, depending on how you've done them, we're all done. And that was hopefully for you as good and tough a workout as it was meant to be. I mean, I'm really, really, really pleased that I managed to get up to 98% of max for the end there. I could see it tracking that basically it was a steady trajectory all the way up, which means it's taken me through the, the gamut of zones, which is kind of what these sessions are meant to be. Okay. Like I said, keep on saying the low intensity, low heart rate, never go over 70%. Um, workouts are so important and then the top end absolute max eyes bulging workouts are so important because you get foundation fitness and vo2 max both of which are all you really need but these ones today are a little bit more kind of uh variation intensity and these are the kind of things that can you can actually really really just dig into and love and enjoy a role like that. I mean, hopefully you did, because I think there's something about that going three, two, one, three, two, one, that it never becomes something you can't manage. Those one minutes are really tough, but you know you're about to get three minutes rest, so you just go for it, and then you get three minutes to kind of uh, recover, or what was I saying, settle down afterwards. So there we go. That was it. So uh, there will be, uh, like I said, I'm going to record the next one. So blah, blah, blah. Um, and then uh, hopefully Sunday or Monday, probably Monday, uh, will be row nine because today is Thursday. If you're, if, uh, I know, it's wibbly wobbly time, I'm afraid. Uh, but there'll be a couple of days before the next session drops um, because I, it's important that you have rest days. Um, okay, so there we go. Right, right, I'm done. Thank you so much for being part of this. Please let me know how you got on with it. Leave me the hashtag get fit with row along um, so that. I can see your hashtag. Um, and uh, yeah, and let me know how you got on with it. Please leave me some kind of message. Let me know you're doing it because otherwise I'll be like, oh, no one's doing these anymore and I'll stop making them. 
that's, that's kind of the deal, really. So thanks once again. Uh, look after yourselves. Row well, be well. Bye-bye.